1 Peter 3, 8 through 12. Finally, all of you uh, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit blessing. I don't know where I am on this, sorry. I'm just reading off the paper, so. Uh, for whoever would love life and see good days uh, must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. Uh, they must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are uh, attentive to their prayer face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Good morning, and thank you for this opportunity to uh, present to you this morning. I have um, enjoyed um, studying on this subject, and it's interesting, the, the topic um, that's, that's in the bulletin isn't quite exactly what We'll be just focusing on that, but it came about through, uh, through Mike's effort and his help. But it's amazing to me when we talk about harmony, how Mike can be up here swatting flies, leading us in singing, and moving forward with the PowerPoint. That's awesome how we can coordinate all of that together um, in that. This morning I have a little story that I wanted to share um, that, that I found uh, on the Internet about harmony. Um, the, the idea of, of being one and working together, because I think um, as we get into our lesson today, we're going to see that, that we need harmony first to implement some of the other things that First Peter talks about. On a rainy night of New Year's Eve, a lonely little girl was saddened by the disagreements that brought upon her family members. Little girl sadly said, it's Chinese New Year's Eve but it's been raining all day long. New Year is coming, but everyone is not in a good mood. Brother insists on buying a new motorcycle. Dad, mom and brother are quarreling about it again. Dad told brother, can't you use the old motorcycle? You just know how to spend money. Mom also said to brother, the economy is bad. Why don't you just use the old one? Brother angrily said, the old motorcycle breaks down all the time. You can use it. I want. It's your fault. You have spoiled him, Dad said to Mom. Little girl asked herself, it's New Year, but why is everyone unhappy? Kitty, can you tell me how to make everyone happy for the New Year, asked the little girl to her cat. Then, outside the window, the little girl looked. Four old men were coming down the street. Dad, Mom, look, brother, come and see quick. Mom said to the old man, uh, it's raining so heavily, sirs. Please come in for shelter. Old man number one said, ha ha, thank you for your kindness, ma'am. But we have a rule. Only one of the four of us can come in. Who do you wish to invite in? The four old men were introduced then introduced themselves one by one. Old man number two, I am wealth. Old man number three, I am success. Old man number four, I am well-being. Old man number one said with a laugh, ha ha, everyone calls me harmony. Dad said to the four old men, surely we should invite in wealth, then we can have a comfortable life. Brother said, no, no, choose success. I want my family to be proud of me. Mom said, wait a moment. I think well-being is most important. Dad exclaimed, wealth. Brother exclaimed, success. Mom exclaimed, well-being. Little girl asked her mother, mom, mom, what is harmony? Why don't you invite in harmony? Dad said, yes, you're right. Why don't we invite in harmony? New Year is here. We should be harmony. Harmonious. Let's invite Mr. Harmony in. 
Seeing that all the four old men came in together, the little girl's father said, "Uh I thought you said only one of you can come in. Why did all of you come in? Old man number one replied, Ha ha, we have another rule. If harmony enters, well-being, success, and wealth often follow. Little girl happily said, Now I understand. To be in harmony is to be happy. The idea with the story is, as we talk about it, is we can allow other things into our life, but if we're not working as God's family and working together in harmony, we're going to miss the points that are important to us. Um, My real title for today would be Five Responsibilities or Duties to Each Other that we find in 1 Peter, um, chapter 3, 8 through 12. So just a little background here. So far in his epistle, Peter has defined the Christian's duties in various relationships. In chapter 2, 11 through 12, he's talked about the duty and relationship to those in the world. In uh, 13 through 17, he's talked about the duty and relationship to governmental authorities. In uh, 18, chapter 2, 18, verses, uh, uh, in chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, 18 through 25, he's talked about our duties to, in the servant-master um, relationship. In 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 through 7, he's talked about our duties in the wife-husband relationship. Beginning now in verse 8 of the third chapter, Peter defines our duty to each other as brethren in Christ. Peter will provide motivation to fulfill our duties to one another in verses 10 through 12. But let's first consider what these duties are. Our duties to each other. The first one that we see mentioned in here is the being of one mind. Really, the the word there, if you have the New American Standard Version, or as it looks, it's to be in harmony. Be in harmony. This is to be united in the same purpose, the same spiritual goal. I thought for an example of this is, is my tie. This tie started out as, I don't know how long the skein of yarn was, but I know it was big. And my daughter, through her skill, knitted it together so in harmony it could look like a tie. We, as God's children, need to allow God to knit us together in harmony so that we can look like his body, his church. So harmony is to be united in the same purpose, the same spiritual goal. Jesus prayed for this kind of unity in John chapter 17. A church that demonstrated This oneness of mind is found in Jerusalem. If we look at Acts chapter 4, verse 32, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. How can we have this oneness of mind? It is only attainable to the extent that we all submit ourselves to the will of God and study his word together to know what his word is. We all need to make God's will our will, his purpose our purpose. It is found by studying his word and living by it and sharing it with each other. If we're to develop this harmony of spiritual um, one-mindedness, we need to work at it together. Now when we're talking about harmony, we're not talking about in agreement with every little thing. It's learning to live together in the spirit of God so that we can serve each other. Because out of this harmony, um, 1 Peter mentions a second thing that we need to do. We need to have compassion for one another. We need to be sympathetic towards one another. This means to have spiritual empathy, to be, have spiritual feelings for each other. From Romans chapter 12, verse 15, it says, Rejoice with the joyful, weep with the distress, or weep with those who are weeping. It means to have a heart position that is tender towards other people. 
It is this disposition which, is, which helps us to be moved by the problems of others. In other words, this idea of being sympathetic allows us to understand others' sicknesses, to understand their hardships, to understand the joy that they're experiencing. If we're able to have feelings for others, we're able to have a readiness to enter into and share the feelings of our brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Such compassion can only come from a tender, loving heart, which may be why Peter goes on to say that we need to love our brothers. We need to be in harmony, we need to be, have compassion for, and we need to love our brothers. Literally, the word here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, means brother lovers. This attribute is essential if we are to grow in peace and knowledge in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is essential if we are going to convince the world that we are truly disciples of Jesus. In John chapter 13, verse 35, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Also, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children as well. There is an aspect that 1 Peter chapter 3 is showing to us as he writes that we are going to love all of our brothers and sisters, even at times when it's hard to love them. We are called to love them. We are called to be in harmony. We are called to have compassion. We are called to love each other. And then he goes on to add the next thing that we should be doing. We should be tender-hearted, love as brothers, and be tender-hearted, kind-hearted, have that compassion that we need to, get, to have to each other. It is this kind of heart that is compassionate, capable of loving our brothers. The opposite would be harshness or a hard-heartedness where we are insensitive to the needs and feelings of others. Have you considered what kind of heart you have? At Camp Hunt, it's amazing to watch the counselors work together and serve the campers that they, they face and they have. The counselors come with a kind-heartedness that is just amazing. And you watch them, you watch these little campers come in some of them are big campers. But you'll watch them come in, and, and you'll see the troubles of the world that they bring with them and how the counselors will just open their lives, that they will be tender-hearted, kind-hearted, and show them a love of Christ and a love of themselves that they've not seen before. This tender-heartedness is so big that Many of the campers circle just as soon as they leave camp. They circle that week the following year because they know they'll be able to come back and experience that. It is so important for them. They look so much forward to one week ends, and they can't wait to get back. Now, it breaks our heart to know that there's toughness in their lives. Excuse me toughness in their lives, but to know that we can provide a place for others to come to experience this tenderheartedness. I know many of you be, have been able to experience that in your time at Camp Hunt and out there serving in all of the things where you can see harmony, compassion, loving your brothers, tenderheartedness, all working together to make changes. The same thing happens here in this congregation. We see it with our bread ministry. We see it when we're reaching out to help other people. It is something that I am so thankful that I see within this congregation here at Wetzel Road. 
But Peter doesn't stop there. He gives us a fifth item that we need to have, that we need to have in our hearts as we serve in our responsibilities and our duties to each other, and that is to be courageous. Really, this, this idea here is to be humble in spirit. Literally means to be friendly of mind and kind. It's, it's this idea that we have a mindset that we're looking at how do we serve others out of kindness. I think in order to do this, we, it, it implies a humility of spirit because an arrogant or a proud spirit does not bother to be courteous. Christians are called to emanate, um, imitate Jesus, our Savior, and not think so highly of ourselves that they cannot be kind and courteous to others. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. We are to look <coughs> to look for how we can implement these five responsibilities in our, in our lives. Because I think if we're able to practice these five responsibilities, they will allow us to be a blessing or show a blessing to other people. Specifically, the example that Peter gives here is that when someone might be a brother, does us some type of evil, we are to respond with kindness, with a blessing. That goes against what the world teaches us. Clearly, we are taught in our world, if an evil happens, we respond with some type of evil. Or up, it's the example that I use often in... Um, I was known as a director at Camp Hunt that didn't allow pranks um, because they always bothered me. Because someone would do a simple, fun prank with somebody else of, of just maybe switching their bed around and making it look the other way. But then the next person would have to up that. And it would get to the point in the, in the aspect of what was happening there that somebody would try to up somebody else and it would get to the point that there were other campers that were afraid they were going to be pranked. So I would draw a line that we're here for everyone to have a great time and it shouldn't be that other people are afraid that something's going to happen to them. And I remember one time and I laughed hard. I laughed hard about the prank that was pulled because it was funny but I also knew that there were other campers that were so afraid that it might happen to them that I had to make an example. And, of course, my son was involved in it, but um, uh, that's okay. And another camper from here, but his name will be anonymous. Um, what they decided is they were getting back and forth at each other, and one day they decided, um, Andrew decided, along with his counselor's help, um, they weren't out alone, they decided that they would run this other camper's underwear up the flagpole. So if they have more, of course, Andrew knew to pick a time when his dad wasn't there. It was his day off so that the next morning the other director would have to deal with it. Um, so they ran this other camper's underwear up the flagpole. And it wasn't just one pair. They had like eight pair of underwear up the flagpole. I thought it was, and, and it was appropriate. They were fun. But what they didn't know is we had other campers there that were deathly afraid that something like that was going to happen to them and they wanted to go home because of that prank that had happened. In order to stop that, that group, that cabin that decided to pick on the other cabin, they had to get up the next morning and do some extra special detail with me. They had to get up the next morning and serve the campgrounds by getting the smudge pot trail ready for that activity. So that. Everybody thought, man, he's not a fun guy. He, 
But the problem is you've got to take into consideration how everybody else is feeling. And when you know that there are others that can't, don't want to be there, you have to find a way to be assuring of them that this is a safe place to be, a place where we're going to protect everybody, a place where we're going to put Christ-like attitudes together and it solved the problem except for the seven that had to help the next morning um, because I told them we're going on a, a journey and that we're going to walk seven miles and that we're going to be involved with having to move things. Well, we walked seven miles, but each one of them only walked three quarters of a mile. Um, so the idea was together we accomplished seven miles of work, but it was just the aspect of getting the smudge pot ready and doing. And trying to set, reset an example that our priorities when we're older campers, when we're more mature campers, we need to take into consideration the feelings of others. When we are Christians, we need to take into not only our own feelings, but consideration of others. Because here, in 2 Peter, he talks about when a brother, when someone does evil, we are to respond with a blessing. Again, this may go against human nature. Peter gives us two reasons why we are to react this way. One is, we are called to follow the example of Christ in 1 Peter 3.9. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. And with 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 23, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. We need to entrust ourselves to God even when it might be our brother, our sister, does some type of evil with us, we need to try to be a Christ-like blessing back. These are five duties that we have toward one another. Live in harmony, be sympathetic, love as brothers, be kind-hearted, be courageous, or humble in spirit. They are part of what constitutes the Christ-like character that we are to develop, to, de, to, to, de, to develop as his disciples. Being saved, then, is not the end of God's plan for us. He would have us all be like his son. To motivate us in fulfilling these duties, Peter quotes from Psalm 34, verses 12 through 16. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. So our motivation to fulfill these duties is that we might live life and see good days. Everyone wishes to enjoy life as they experience it from day to day. But too often, we make our own lives miserable by our own self-seeking, self-destructive attitudes, constantly complaining, contentious, retaliating to the evil with evil. They only aggravate the situation. But David, in his psalm, gives the secret to loving life and seeing good days. Refrain the tongue from evil 
and the lips from speaking guile. In other words, we're to refrain even when others do evil to us. Don't engage in slander, backbiting, complaining, lying, murmuring, or grumbling. It doesn't solve difficulties, but only makes them worse. Do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Do the very kind of things mentioned by Peter in 1 Peter chapter 3, 8 through 9. Then only will our lives be pleasant for the qualities described by Peter. Make the best out of difficult situations. Make good situations even better. Why? So the Lord will be open to us. In 1 Peter 3.12, only by doing the will of God, and I would say, talking about in, in the structure of what we're doing with the sense, only by applying these five um, duties and responsibilities, putting those into practice in our lives, can we ensure his gracious eyes will watch over us, his ears will be open to our prayers? On the other hand, the Lord's face is against those who do evil and will not hear their prayers. Indeed, consider the list of abominations found in Proverbs chapter 6, 16 through 19. And notice how many are the direct opposite of how we are to be. We are to be courteous or humble, but the Lord hates a proud look. We are to be compassionate. But abusing the innocent is an abomination to the Lord. We are to be tender-hearted, but the Lord hates a cold heart that thinks evil of others. We are to return good for evil, but those who respond quickly with evil, the Lord abhors. We are to be of one mind, but if we sow, sow discord by murmuring and complaining, we are abominable in God's sight. So in conclusion, if we want God to watch over us, if we want him to heed to our prayers, let us be sure to fulfill our duties to each other as brethren outlined by what we've read in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8-9. through 9. This isn't to say and to remember that the blood of Christ covers us. We can't earn our way to heaven, but we can see from 1 Peter chapter 3 in these verses that we as God's children are called to be active within his church and to be active in these five duties, to be active in being compassionate, to be active in being humble, to be active in being sympathetic, to be active in loving each other, and to be active in harmony with God's children. In so doing, we will enjoy life to its fullest and see many good days during our pilgrimage here on earth, and we will then be able to be a blessing to each other and be a blessing that shines out to the world as something they don't normally see.